Hello, my name is Mariana Matsukato. I'm a professor in the economics of innovation and public value at University College London, where I founded and direct the Institute for Innovation and Public Purpose. And it's an honor to be able to speak to you at a conference on creative bureaucracies, why I set up the Institute and what we're trying to do. So in a nutshell, what we try to do is rethink the state, but not only the state, the state is obviously interacting with so many different actors in the economy, business, nonprofits, third sector organizations, trade unions, citizens. So rethinking also those relationships along the way. We're a full-fledged department inside the Bartlett faculty at University College London. The Bartlett is actually known for its uh, design thinking within the area of the built environment. And this is really appropriate for us to be in, in that faculty because we're very much about bringing agency back to the economy by rethinking the state. We always begin with the premise that markets are the outcomes, in fact, of design processes, how we design uh, public organizations, their governance structures, the governance structures of the private sector, but also of those relationships, the contracts, the way that public-private partnerships are uh, constructed, and again, also how they relate to these other types of actors. Uh, because we're a department, we have our own education program, and this is really uh, an ambitious part of what we're trying to do. We're trying to rewrite the curriculum. Rewrite the curriculum because, well, the curriculum for who? For bureaucrats, for civil servants, but again, for anyone who's going to be working with the state. Why do we need to rewrite it? Because economic theory, which informs so much policymaking, has unfortunately, in a very narrow way, informed policy, and hence state organizations themselves, how they think about their role, as though it's really at best about fixing a market failure. There's a whole rigorous approach about that called market failure theory. It shouldn't be thrown out, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but it really needs to be complemented by what we call market shaping and market co-creating. And why is that? Well, if you look historically at the role that the state has played, when it has actually been successful in transforming economies, whether it's bringing about the ICT revolution or setting up the welfare state, or today uh, basically trying to foster a green transition, it's very hard to look at that as simply a set of different bandages fixing either positive externalities or negative externalities. It actually required a bold ambition, what we often call a mission, and also rethinking the tools of policymaking to foster that change. And again, that change often being one that requires different types of partnerships. So whether we look at procurement policy, grants, loans, different types of subsidies, these are all different levers that governments have. And we're very interested in rethinking how those levers can be used to foster transitions, whether it be the green transition or all the different types of investments and activities that are required to help us solve the 17 sustainable development goals that countries worldwide have signed up to. So really what we do is we, on the research side, try to push the frontier of concepts like public value. So value itself is being co-created by public, private, uh, civil society organizations with the public bit being essential. What does public value mean? Uh, how do we measure it? How do we nurture it? Um, concepts like public purpose. So, uh, you know, if an economy actually has a purpose, then it has a direction. How do we talk about directionality of the economy, whether it's in economics or in different types of um, disciplines uh, that, again, inform policymaking? Um, so that research agenda that we have, which then we apply to concepts around transforming institutions, redirecting finance, uh, uh, rethinking value and shaping innovation, that's just the list of four of our research pillars, we then put into practice in the policymaking world because we're actually quite active working with countries and organizations uh, about actually implementing these ideas, especially around the concepts of missions, which I'll come to in a minute. But that, those lessons that then we learn in working with policymakers, we bring back to the theory. This is probably the most important thing to say that an IPP 
we're not about professing to the world. We're also about very much learning from what works on the ground. So yes, we are very interested in alternative framings, not market fixing, but market shaping, the underlying pillars that that requires around public value, public purpose. But when we then bring it to practice, we learn and then bring that learning back to the research. And similarly, when we bring this learning to the curriculum, we are engaging with you know, extremely bright um, students that in, in many cases have had experience on the ground in the, uh, you know, whether it's in a public organization, a consulting company that worked with a public organization, or, or different types of private uh, sector organizations, when they are coming to us to engage with this new learning, they themselves, of course, bring their experience. And part of the curriculum, as you'll be hearing from my colleagues, is actually a placement uh, within some of these ambitious public organizations worldwide. So again, that learning comes back to the classroom. So a constant feedback between these three pillars of rethinking the state with new theoretical tools, engaging with the practice on the ground, and bringing that to a new curriculum with the feedback effects going between them uh, is what we're about. Uh, I'll just say quickly, one of the things that we've done in the last year and a half is something exciting, and I have a, just by chance, a, a cardboard uh, a, a poster here, just to kind of go deep dive into this notion of public purpose. So a report that I wrote, sorry, you're probably seeing this uh, backwards anyway, um, on mission-oriented innovation helped to bring this concept of missions and public purpose to the fore of, of the European Commission um, thinking around innovation policy. And just quickly, just because I happen to have this near me, the idea is that you begin with the biggest challenges we have, the SDGs, like the SDG around um, life underwater and clean oceans, turn it into a very specific mission that's targeted and concrete. You can actually say yes or no, did you achieve it? But it has to be designed in an inspirational way that both speaks to citizens, but also catalyzes intersectoral investment in innovation across the economy. So it's not about picking one sector, one kind of firm, one kind of technology, a random list that could be five or six of any of those um, categories, but actually fostering as much activity and additionality across the economy that wouldn't have happened anyway by having a really bold uh, uh, and targeted public mission. And then this is where it gets interesting. These are all these uh, circles under here which we call uh, mission projects. And the idea is that you kind of redesign, coming back to this notion of design and the built environment, the tools that governments have to actually foster as much bottom-up, I'll repeat, bottom-up uh, innovation and activity amongst different types of organizations, public, private, and third sector, to fuel different solutions to meet those public goals. But this really has to be also about you know, uh, uh, strengthening the underlying systems that are in the background. Sometimes the, t the word moonshot has been misused, I think, to just look at a siloed project, a kind of random maybe project of a particular ministry. We're very much about interministerial alignment, intersectoral activity, but also strengthening the systems, for example, underlying the welfare state, whether it's public transport, public education, public health. But what the missions concept does is it just gives a new way of actually thinking about how to use uh, policies like innovation policy, industrial strategy, and rethinking procurement policy to actually meet some of the most important goals of our time. And what the Institute does is do a real deep dive into what does that then mean for thinking about value? What does it mean for thinking about stakeholder value, public-private partnerships in a different way? What does it mean for the practical consequences for how you design procurement? and so on. Anyway, it's been wonderful to speak to you briefly about that, but we think uh, it's very important to do exactly what your conference is about, which is to rethink bureaucracies and ask why is it that that word bureaucratic is often a negative uh, word. Thinking about creative or sexy bureaucracies uh, is absolutely essential in order to also attract the best minds out there to come into the civil service. But that's not enough. Along the way, we need new instruments, new tools, redesigning not just policies, but the, um, the nitty gritty. And it's very important to have that constant feedback between the theorizing, the policy making, and the curriculum.
And we very much hope you visit our website and interact with us through different types of channels. Anyway, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Hello, hello there, and welcome uh, to our session um, on our MPA. And uh, here we are uh, with Kate Roll, our head of teaching, and I am Ryan Couple. I'm deputy director and uh, professor at IIPP. And um, as you just heard, um, our director, Mariana Mazzucato, on the reasons why she started this institute and, uh, and we created this MPA program. And we are now doing more, on a, more of a discussion of, uh, of this, um, this program. And we, we, will, we will go through a couple of um, points or issues, if you will. We will discuss first our structure of our program, and then we look, at our, look, look back at our first year, look at, back at our first cohort, people, you know, faculty involved, uh, uh, also the students, what did we learn? And, uh, and things like that. So first of all, just to give you a, a very quick overview of our program. So we have uh, four core modules, as, it's, uh, as they're called. So they are really, first two are around fundamentals, uh, if you will, around systems and markets. So the first one is around public value. The other one is around grand challenges and, and systems change. But they, these are really providing a, a fundamentals uh, around economic thinking and also thinking about politics and thinking of thinking about the state. And, and both of these modules are sort of uh, as built as an alternative to existing mainstream uh, degree programs, if you will. And then the second set of modules uh, is around, one of them is actually called creative bureaucracies, uh, funny enough, or maybe not so funny enough, but uh, it's a nice coincidence. And it, it does look at the, the key issues around uh, government as, as organized through organizations and, and bureaucracy and how do they work, what are the key issues around uh, trying to uh, tackle challenges and solve, solve problems. And the last one is then around the transformation by design where we bring in all those you know, new uh, ways of, uh, of doing policy and creating um, and working in organizations. And then, then we have our, as our last term uh, is around either dissertation, which is an individual and more classic policy analytical work, or an option of doing a placement, which we conceived of as a group placement. So students go as, uh, as a team of three or four students into a public organization and try to solve actual real challenges uh, taking on board all those new ideas from public value to mission-oriented innovation and of course being creative in bureaucracies so this is the basic structure of our course and and i think now uh, uh kate you you can come in and uh and talk about some of those um reflections about our first year yeah, sure. Just just to add on the on the course structure, I think it's important to emphasize this is a multidisciplinary course. So if you you come and study with us, you're getting economics, politics, organization studies, and design. So bringing all of those disciplines together, and then the general course structure really moves from these core foundations, these core theories, towards practice, where you're applying it to um, a, a, a a policy document, a, a policy thesis, or you're actually entering an organization and interacting with them. So multidisciplinary and then with this move from, from theory to practice. And yeah, so just to go to reflections on what we've um, learned in our first year, for me, one of the biggest ones that, that came up when I, was, when I was thinking about this was just the strengths of our students. Um, we had it, an unusual year with with the COVID-19 um, pandemic coming in and seeing these students rise to the occasion and do these um, placements virtually. So that was sort of really this admiration towards towards the grit and resilience of our students, but then also towards their incredible skill. Many of us are working with um, students as research assistants and they've really become collaborators and colleagues and more than just being passengers in a master's program, they're really contributing to the policy work we're doing, um, the research work we're doing um, at IIPP. Yeah, and I, just to uh, give you an, an idea about um, the basically students involved. So we had uh, our first cohort was 40 students 
Um, and we had a, a really a very diverse set of students, both in terms of age, um, uh, geographic origin, and, and also the disciplines they had studied, studied before. So if you think about people who are currently working in civil service, uh, people who have just graduated basically from uh, an undergraduate degrees, but we had all of them, I think the age, uh, average age was around 29. So, and we had also people uh, from the private sector who had worked before in the private sector and were now, I think, in uh, joining uh, a public sector. We, are, we had people from NGO sector or were, who were largely in, interested in the, in the third sector. And of course, we had also people all over the world. So we had uh, people from UK, Europe, Asia, different countries from Asia, Latin America as well, and, and also Africa. So we were, uh, we were, and one student from North America as well. So we, we were really covering as, as, as much as possible almost. So in that sense, we had a very nicely diverse uh, cohort. And, and this is also for our, our second cohort seems to be the case as well, which we're very happy about. And in terms of the, um, the way we, we set up our teaching program, you know, as, as Kate was, was saying before, this is truly interdisciplinary program. And so we have both uh, academics um, like ourselves and um, teaching, but we had also a, a lot of uh, people from practice in terms of either people who have been or are at the moment working in civil service, our, our, our policymakers, but also people who are somewhere in between uh, mm -hmm. academe, policy. So people from, um, from, from various walks of life, like for instance, systems designers, uh, people who do uh, work for think tanks, um, policymakers, politicians. So we had a, uh, a, a lot of um, various uh, uh, faculty, I think, doing the, doing the teaching as well. And, um, and that's really, uh, again, the strength of, uh, of being very interdisciplinary. And of course, this was also something for us as, as a challenge, I think, initially. How do you keep a, a coherent, um, if you will, you know, story through a, a module going by including so many different angles, but also by including different perspectives in terms of academic practitioners. So how do you keep the academic and theoretical and conceptual discussion going and at the same time apply it constantly and also constantly be questioned by practice which 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 i think was the the most interesting bit perhaps how do theories and practice tend to clash quite often uh, so yeah that was that was really interesting yeah i think another thing that adds coherence to the course and maybe sets it apart from other MPAs or MPP programs is I think it's got a real sort of heart to it, <laughs> a real interest in these values like public value, missions, um, uh, participation. There's a real set of tools or ideas that, that we emphasize around things like transformative change that I think is distinctive from a maybe more, more traditional um, policy program or public administration program. And so these, these questions of you know, public value, how is it generated, how is it measured, I think is a thread that runs through not only the first module, but all the modules. And then you see it coming out in the analysis that students are doing in their placements. And so there's some sort of core beats, core ideas, um, missions, creativity, entrepreneurship, um, innovation that really bring sort of a, a coherence to the course despite the diversity. And then these core ideas are being refracted through these different disciplinary lenses. What kind of organization do you need to drive innovation? What is the political economy of, of innovation? Um, these kind of questions keep things together and, and really attract students who are interested in those questions and those problems. And I think what was really interesting for the, our first year was well, not interesting, of course, it was also tragic that COVID-19 happened and it was right after our term two. So students had basically done all the sort of classroom work and now they were ready to go into the world and through the placements and then COVID happened. And I think what we realized very quickly and then students as well is that, you know, the things that we are talking about, uh, you know, agile and, and responsive public sector, innovative public sector, creative public sector, but at the same time, also, of course, very skillful and resilient public sector were, were exactly put on, on um, uh, or became really the, the key topics of, of the next months and are still today, of course. We are now again, of course, facing uh, quite massive lockdowns probably across the world. 
So all those skills, how actually governments are dealing with these kind of massive crises, how they're able to basically source in and build capabilities inside and also work with industry and other actors, I think is, uh, is something that is really at, at the heart of our, our MPA. And this was right away put to test. So we had the students who went to local London councils. They had to work with teams who are actually dealing with the crisis uh, on a uh, day-to-day basis. So they, they did a put into practice a lot of the skills that I just a few weeks ago had learned in transformation by design course. So how do you do user research? How do you actually find out those needs of the people that was actually drastically increasing day by day uh, in terms of uh, how did they get the medication, people who need food? So this was uh, for our students, I think it was, uh, it was a really um, great experience, of course, in, 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 in quotation marks, because it was also at the same time tragic, but it proved, I think, but what, what we do with our MPA is really what governments need, need today. This, you know, the critiques that we have of, of governments or concerns that we have with governments that are raised, raised in the early modules, I think became illustrated, you know, these failings of the, of the current system, the dangers of inequality, um, the dangers of unequal access to, to health, to protections. Um, these really came to light. So, you know, they're sort of, they were really illustrated. So I think that was an interesting point of COVID. And then also this need or this demand for alternative ways of thinking, alternative ways of governing. And so I felt like the MPA has really been built around this question. And then the question was posed in this very dramatic way um, by, by the COVID-19 crisis. So I think a lot of what IAPP has been doing is, is providing a, a different way forward, an alternative to austerity, an alternative to, to privatization. Um, and that these are really the core themes now. So the sort of the relevance um, and necessity of this course, I think have really been proven by, by this crisis. Um, and the, yeah. the, this really speaks to these, these issues. Yeah, and I think the, one of the things I think um, our viewers might, one of the questions yeah. our viewers might have is why do we have a module or a course on creative bureaucracy? And this is exactly as, as Kate was talking about, that we, we are really trying to offer something different to not only existing MPAs, but also the way governments very often thinks about public service as such. I mean, as, as you all know, of course, we, 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 you know, all governments basically start from this assumption that you need neutral expertise to actually implement and deliver on the policies or political decisions, if you will. And of course, I think in, in real life, this is of course also true, but you also need much more sort of proactive, and you want to have proactive civil servants. You want to people who actually care about your problems, who want to solve your problems, and you want to you who want to offer alternatives to policymakers, and who are also able to actually use multiple ways of evaluating, for instance, policies. Not only use one toolbox, or you know, as Mark Twain used to say, if only if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail pretty soon. So I think you want to have this diversity, and this is why. We call one of those uh, models creative bureaucracies because I, this is something that you won't expect in a bureaucracy. You won't, you won't expect this to be a, a, a creative place. And of course, this doesn't mean that bureaucracies have to be all the same or creativity is, is similar. And, and something that we saw in the crisis, you saw countries being very differently, very creative and also succeeding. So if you look at countries like Vietnam or Germany, they, they're, they're, you know, public sectors are quite different, but they were you know, very good at, at, at dealing with the crisis or countries like Rwanda. And it's very different you know, public sectors, but they dealt with, uh, with the crisis uh, very well. And so these, these are the things that we try to tease out in those modules, what actually makes uh, a creative, agile bureaucracy and what actually makes at the same time also resilient bureaucracy. So I think for us, see, these things are really and uh, issues that we want to think about together, like agility and resilience. So how do you make something that, a, a system that is dynamic and agile, but at the same time also resilient? Yeah. This is, I think, very important. I, I think that speaks somewhat to our sort of future plan. So we're now just starting the second year of the program. We're, we're growing and will continue to grow over the next couple of years. And this will be a real opportunity for us as well to build out from our core set of modules to additional areas in which we have, have expertise or have, have uh, sustained interest. So we've been talking about one on digital government, um, bringing in some of the experts that, that we use throughout the course. 
Um, so we'll be sort of continuing to, to grow the program in terms of students, but in terms also in terms of the offerings and, and what IAPP is teaching both to our own students and then across UCL and increasingly also doing executive education programs where we're bringing in um, members of government or from non-governmental organizations to talk through some of these ideas, do sort of a bespoke mini MPA um, to be able to communicate uh, what, we're, what we're working with our, with our students. Yeah, and I think the, another really key aspect of, of, of our work is really to connect to, to our ongoing academic and policy work. So we work a lot with the various governments across the world. So we have what we call mission oriented innovation network. So if you go to our website, uh, you can find this network that has around 50 uh, organizations across the world. And these, these are all organizations that basically buy into our way of thinking. So they think as well that the governments need to be creative, agile, but at the same time resilient as well. They need to have a long term view and that, that they have a, a really important role in, in, in tackling the grand challenges. So these are very different organizations from uh, public design agencies to public banks to, to public health organizations to digital agencies. So th these are all a, you know, public organizations from, from Europe, Africa, Asia, Latin America, all over the world really. And we are working with them very closely on our day-to-day -day sort of research lives, if you will. And this is where we, we, we bring our students in, of course. The placements are in these, those organizations. And in a way, COVID and online teaching and working offers us the opportunity to offer those placements and working together with those organizations also now globally. And this year we did it on, in the UK uh, for all those practical reasons. But I mean, now we can do it online. We can actually expand our, our work. And this also leads us to, to really our fundamental um, goal, if you will, which is really to create a new this curriculum for, for public service teaching, for education, if you will, that, that really is not only in one institute in London, but that actually can be uh, done uh, globally. And so we are really thinking about uh, a textbook. We are thinking about cases, working those cases and case studies into teachable materials so that they can be shared. This becomes a library. And, and again, this is something that uh, the public sector is, is, is so far missing in public sector education. And I think, again, if you, if you compare ourselves to, to similar programs, I think that the really that sets us apart is, is that uh, we don't really want to only provide sort of the, really the basic skills that the civil servants should have, like in policy analysis, for instance, but also how do you go and think outside of the box? Mm -hmm. How do you actually challenge the existing systems as well, yet remain, of course, within your own legal ethical frameworks? So how do you do, what are the tools to do that? And I think this is a really like a fundamental task for, for civil servants uh, for the next decades, really. And for us, the, the MPA is, is a big way of spreading that message. So now we have, you know, about 40 students who are going forth, they're gonna be taking part, both, you know, returning to their, their jobs in the civil service, joining the civil service, um, working in NGOs, working in private sector, but with this sort of new, new understanding and new appreciation of the entrepreneurial state, a new appreciation of, of public value creation. And so that's really a way for us to widen our reach um, as, as you know, new generations come through and then we'll end up with a, a strong alumni network of, of like-minded students. So, you know, we really see it as a big part of our impact story um, to help, to help you know, seed these, these future creative bureaucracies. Exactly. And yeah, I think uh, this is pretty much it from our side. So I think we, we have covered all the things we wanted to, to do, talk about today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And, and of course, we encourage you to visit our website and look, look up our programs. Um, a lot of our stuff is online. So we, we do various lecture series events and uh, so follow us on, on Twitter uh, subscribe to our uh, newsletter and uh, yeah visit us if you if you can digitally or physically Happy to thank you very much thank you bye bye